The audio interface is one of the most important components of your home studio. And by the end of this video, you'll know the three key factors to consider when shopping for the right one. But if you're new to this channel, my name is Kyle. You can learn audio production online by checking out the weekly videos I post to the Audio University YouTube channel. Learn more at audiouniversityonline.com. The first factor you should consider when choosing an audio interface is the number of inputs. This will usually be determined by the number of channels you'll need to record at once. If you're not sure how many channels you need, consider how you'll use the interface. If your plan is to only produce music with virtual instruments inside your DAW, or to mix and master pre-recorded tracks, you won't necessarily need any analog inputs. If your plan is to make simple recordings of vocals and guitar, or to build songs by layering one instrument at a time, you can probably get away with just two inputs on your interface. However, if you plan to record drums or a live band, you will need an interface that allows you to record several tracks at once. It's important to understand the difference between mic level, instrument level, and line level signals when choosing an interface. I made a whole video comparing these signal types that you can watch right here. To illustrate why this is important, let's take a look at the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 and 4i4. The 2i2 has two inputs, and the 4i4 has four inputs. This might be deceiving. You may think that the 2i2 is capable of recording two microphones, while the 4i4 is capable of recording four microphones, but this isn't the case. That's because both of these interfaces only offer two mic level inputs with microphone preamps. The two extra inputs on the 4i4 are line level inputs, which are for recording keyboards or sequencers, not microphones directly. In order to record microphones with a line level input, you would need an external microphone preamp. In addition to the number of inputs, you should also consider the number of outputs available when choosing an audio interface. If you simply want to record yourself, all you will need is two line outputs for studio monitors and one headphone output for monitoring. Most audio interfaces on the market provide these basic outputs, but there are some scenarios where you might find yourself wanting some extra outputs. If you'll be recording other people, you'll benefit from an additional headphone output. This will allow you and the musician to listen through headphones at the same time, maybe even with separate headphone mixes. If you plan to expand your studio to include outboard compressors, EQs, or other outboard effects, you'll need a few extra line outputs. That way you can send audio out of the interface, through the outboard equipment, and back into the audio interface for mixing. Plus, if you want the ability to mix in 5.1 or another surround format, you'll need a line output of your interface for each speaker in your system. Once you've got an idea of how many inputs and outputs you need, it's time to decide if that fits within your budget. You'll find that there are more factors than just the number of inputs and outputs that determine the price of an audio interface. You can find interfaces with eight microphone preamps for less than $300, while you can find interfaces with only two microphone preamps for over 2,000. What's the difference? Aside from the inputs and outputs, what other factors determine the price of an interface? One of the biggest differences between entry-level audio interfaces and more expensive audio interfaces is the quality of the microphone preamps. Don't get me wrong, modern entry-level audio interfaces offer amazing microphone preamps for the money, but there are certainly benefits to going with a more expensive interface in order to get a higher quality microphone preamp. Higher quality mic preamps usually provide more gain, which can be really useful when using microphones that require a lot of gain, such as the Shure SM7B. Lower quality mic preamps usually have more inherent noise than the mic pre's that you'd find in a higher quality interface. Keeping the noise of the mic pre down will help keep the overall noise floor of your recordings as low as possible. You'll also find that some microphone preamps are designed to be as transparent as possible, while other microphone preamps are designed to add a bit of color to the signal. So you may decide that it's worth spending a bit more to get a set of preamps that are known and famous for their signature sound. Another factor that plays into the price of an audio interface is its ability to process audio. This is one factor that makes UAD audio interfaces so appealing. They actually have processors on board that can run certain plugins that you get free with that interface, 
So that takes some of the load off of the CPU in your computer and puts it instead on the processor within your audio interface. And finally, the connection type will play a role in your decision and in the price of the audio interface. If you want to keep it simple, I'd recommend going with either USB or Thunderbolt. If you want your interface to be able to receive and send audio network streams, then I would go with something with an Ethernet connection that can use AVB, Dante, or another audio network protocol. I want to offer you a free recording studio checklist to make sure you've got everything you need to make professional recordings. You can download that now at audiouniversityonline.com slash free home studio checklist. Hit the like button if you found this video helpful and watch the next video to learn more about audio production.